What is going on, guys? Thanks for tuning into the channel. Uh, this will be a short one. Just basically, I uh, wanted to go over with you changing the sprockets and the chain on a Raptor 350. This would apply to a Warrior 350 as well. Same drivetrain. Um, I replaced them with stock size sprockets and uh, an X ring chain. So I got the whole kit from Rocky Mountain ATV. I went with their gold X ring chain. Now, um, I'll show you what difference between an X-ring and an O-ring is in a minute. X-ring is a little bit better than an O-ring chain. So, the reason why I switched them out is the sprockets weren't too worn, but the chain that came on it, if you guys haven't been following this video series on the uh, Raptor 350, I picked it up. It was a little bit neglected in a way. I think it's just been sitting for a long time. It wasn't really ridden much. Um, we spruced it up quite a bit. Uh, you can check out the, the previous videos for all the updates we did new clutch, um, one-way bearing, all that stuff. So now we're doing the sprockets and the chain. The The chain that was on there was disgusting. I uh, couldn't get it really that clean. I don't know what they greased it with or put on here, but it was pretty uh, It was pretty gross. And if you look in there, in some of them, you can see the O-rings are, this is an O-ring chain. The O-rings are actually missing. So they're just dried out and garbage you know there's a lot of there's a lot of play in it side to side uh in the chain it wiggles a little bit so it's got a lot of slop i wanted I, the way i found that out is i actually just went to check the tightness of it and um upon closer inspection i i was going to change the chain out anyway but it, it became a little more important once i seen there was some o-rings missing and stuff and i just didn't want to even take a chance taking that out again um on that chain so what did the whole kit from Rocky Mountain ATV? It was like $95 for both sprockets and the new uh, gold X-ring chain. You can get a standard chain. The gold chain is just a higher tensile strength, so it's a little bit stronger. That's all. It was worthwhile for me to do it. It was literally, I think, $6 difference between the gold chain and the standard color chain. Um, and the tensile strength for the gold one is like over 8,000 pounds uh, tensile strength. So super strong chain. And then the sprockets are steel. So I wasn't going to go with aluminum sprockets. Um, they just wear, you know, it's aluminum, it's going to wear out faster. So stock size sprockets, it's uh, 38 in the back. And I think the front was 13. Whatever the factory size is, I ordered the kit. So I wanted to show you guys a couple tips. So when you take the old one off, old rear sprocket off, you can see here's the old one. It wasn't terribly worn, but if I'm going to replace the chain, it literally was a 15 minute job, you know, changing the sprockets out. So I took the, took the old sprocket off. You just got to take the one wheel off. If you never changed sprockets before, it's super easy. The way the sprocket is cut out and designed that once you unbolt those four bolts here, uh, it's just going to kind of slip over this inner hub. Um, and then it's going to sl slide over the outer hub, but you got to have, obviously have your wheel off. So I have it jacked up, the wheel off, comes right off. And then I'm not 100% certain. I couldn't find the exact torque specs on these rear ones. So I made them uh, snug with the cordless impact. And then uh, I used a little bit of blue Loctite. These these uh, nuts that are on here are lock nuts anyway. So if you make them, you don't need to kill them. They're not, they're not that big of bolts. They're like 14 millimeter bolts. So um, pretty snug. And then some blue Loctite. The front one is pretty specific. You know, you want to, some guys will tell you, you just, you know, impact wrench it on tight enough and then put the lock washer, but you got to be careful. The threads on the uh, shaft and the output shaft here on the transmission are very fine threads. You can strip them out fairly easy if you're really, uh, you know, knocking the hell out of it with an impact. So I did it to spec, which is about 55 foot pounds from everything, all the research I've found. And, um, then you fold the uh, lock washer over it so the nut can't back off. So I ordered also when I got the kit, you can get a generic chain. It's a 520 width chain. Uh, it's a 98 link chain is the stock chain, 98 links long. So that's just how many of these links lengthwise. It's 98 links. Now you can go run up to a local store probably and get a five. You know, 520 with chain and 110, 120 links. They need a chain break, which isn't that hard, but you can order the kit from Rocky Mountain and have it in two days. 
the exact amount of links you need. There's no having to cut the chain. There's no nothing. You just put it on. That's it. So that's what I did. Super easy. What did it Friday? It's Monday now. I've gotten it. Um, so when you're putting this on again, torque it down to like 55 foot pounds. And I'll show you what I did. I put it in gear. You can get it most of the way tight with you with if you have a good torque wrench. And then um, it's going to start turning on you. You know, so you're going to need something to hold it. So before you put the chain on there, obviously with the sprocket exposed, I have the uh, I have a clutch tool that I used. So right here, this is a clutch tool. From, you can get this from Rocky Mountain ATV, actually. Also, this is a Tusk clutch tool. So when you're working on your clutch and you have to hold your clutch basket to tighten that and all that stuff, it's good for anything, side-by-sides, anything you put in a clutch in. Um, I set it so that I could put it on either side of the sprocket and hold it up here and clamp it down. It's a vice grip type handle. Hold it and then give it the extra crank on the uh, torque wrench to 55 foot-pounds. So you're going to need, again, something to hold it there unless you just want to use an impact and, you know, crush your fingers. That it's, ends up being good. But I wanted to torque that one specifically to what it's supposed to. So that's that. I'll show you guys. So when you get the chain, you're going to get a master link. And then uh, it's going to come with some grease. This is the master link kit. And have your uh, backside of the master link. It's going to come with not O-rings. I don't know if it's going to focus here, but X-rings. There you go. You see the rings there? Instead of like an O-ring, that would just be round and smooth. This, if I can get it to focus. I'm not trying to know if I can. But you'll see there's some grooves. And the, the, the uh, gasket, instead of a, a round type O-ring, it's kind of square and it's got some lines on it. That's, that's why it's called an X-ring chain. So you just basically need to get more mating surface. Um, against the against the link, and it's going to do a better job sealing out dirt. What you don't want is the, the reason for the the rings. When you have a non O ring chain or a um, open, you know, where the chain the chain doesn't have O rings, doesn't have X rings or nothing, they do make those. They're mostly for street use because you don't want to get dirt in here. So the O rings prevent, and the O ring chains run a little quieter. Uh, same thing goes for the X ring chain. So it prevents the dirt from getting in here where the pins go, where the pins slide through the chain, like that. So once, when the pins slide through the chain there, you, want, you don't want dirt getting in there. So that's what the O-rings and the X-rings lock out the dirt. So that's it. I mean, just quick, quick tips. It comes with a little grease. You can use this grease packet here. Grease up the uh, master link before you slide it in because obviously... Uh, all the other links are installed in, in the chain, and that's how they are. They're greased. The rings are on each side. They're sealed. So when you when you put your new master link in, that's it. So what I did is I cranked – I uh, loosened the rear end. You're going to loosen up here on each side, obviously, and you're going to loosen on the bottom down here, that bolt there. Once you loosen those, you can take your um, – take, a, take a, a pry bar and just kind of kind of force it up. From here and then when you if you push down on it it'll push it all the way forward so you're at the loosest position all right and then once you get this way that'll give you plenty of slack to get the new chain on and you kind of use the use rear sprocket as your guide it's gonna i can't do this on camera here with uh, one hand but when you when you once you get it there you can slide your master link in right and then put the other side on the other side is going to compress a little bit you're going to need to compress it a little so once you get the master link in and the chain here and you put this other side on, you're going to put the other uh, rings on, your other X rings on here, right? Um, and then you're going to put this on. When you put that piece on, you're going to need to kind of squeeze it a little bit. You might need a pair of vice grips, grab it, squeeze it from the middle just to force it on enough to get your C-clip. Uh, this clip is going to slide on the two links right here. You can see there's a little bit of a groove, a little bit of a notch in the master link. And this is going to slide on like this. You're going to want to put the link on the round part facing forward. And that's just so, God forbid, you know, that's the direction the chain is turning. So if, if for whatever reason something grabs or catches that, it's not going to be able to pop this ring off. It's, it's going in the, in the direction where if you put it this way, 
right? You just kind of be, it could get potentially knocked off when you, when you're in forward motion, if it, if it happens to hit something on a trail or what something comes up and grabs it, um, this way it will not, you'll, you, you won't have any issues. I've never seen anybody pop a master link off if it's installed properly. So, um, that's it. Super simple process. Once you get the master link on, then you can adjust your adjusters on the bottom. The same way you would just tighten, tighten your chain, right? Just crank these in evenly. There's little marks so that you know you're doing them even on both sides. So it's centered when it's coming back. And that's it. Set your chain slack to about an inch to an inch and a quarter is spec. Brand new chain. I'm going to set it to, the, you will, even when you tighten it, you want to set it to the minimal setting, which is about an inch. This way it gives you a little bit of leeway there for stretch. And then when it does stretch, if you've set it an inch and a quarter and as soon as it starts stretching, you're already got too much slack in it. So you set it to about an inch. Uh, but after the first couple of rides, it should do its initial stretch. And then you shouldn't get a ton of stretching after that. If it's if your chain's constantly stretching, every time you ride, you have to adjust your chain. Then the chain you bought is a piece of junk. Um, or you have very worn sprockets. Or your sprockets are wearing one or the other. Because, like, for example, my, I, in any quad I've ever had, most of my ATVs, um, with the exception of a couple, have been new ones. And I've never had to adjust my chain with all the OEM parts, all that regularly. You know, you, you get an initial stretch, you, you adjust your chain, and then you should be good for a while. Uh, you shouldn't be having to, it shouldn't be stretching every ride. If you are using cheap parts, do not cheap out on sprockets and chains because you're asking for problems if you're gonna cheap out on sprockets and chains. So that thing breaks, um, you, you're gonna potentially crack your case if you don't have a case saver which you should be running, which we actually have uh, one coming in for this machine. Um, so I'm not gonna put the, not gonna put the cover there back on yet. We're gonna, I have a DRW case saver coming that kind of encapsulates the whole front sprocket. And then uh, this sucker will be good to go for our Dune trip here in a couple of weeks, going with Dune ATV, a um, little father daughter trip. He's bringing his daughter uh, and then I'm bringing mine. This is her machine. And then we're gonna go hit uh, Glamis uh, the Imperial sand dunes, um, mostly the buttercup side of the sand dunes there. But yeah, guys, that's it. I just wanted to give you a couple of tips and tricks. This is super easy stuff. This is not rocket science. You just got to take your time and do it the right way. Uh, don't, don't cut corners. This is not the place to cut corners. It's putting the chain sprockets on. You want that stuff on secure. That's what drives your whole machine. All the torque, everything is on that chain and sprocket. Don't put it on incorrectly and don't, uh, you know, don't cut corners. Don't use cheap parts. Like I said, this is primary drive stuff. It's kind of like the Rocky Mountain uh, ATV in-house brand, but all the reviews say it's really quality stuff. Um, and for, you know, $95, $98 it was shipped to the door, old sprockets, uh, it's a pretty good price. It doesn't make sense to just change the chain. So change it all together. They all wear us together. They wear items and uh, you shouldn't have any problems, but that's it. Don't buy that eBay junk either. Don't buy no eBay chains and eBay sprockets and you know, Chinese stuff on Amazon. This is not, again, I can't, I can't iterate enough, to <laughs> express enough, you know, this is not the place to cheap out. So get, get quality stuff. Um, you know, high end expensive stuff is like DID, um, rental pro taper even has, has a line of chains, They're all good stuff. This stuff here is just as good. The primary drive, um, they get great reviews. You don't see any, you don't really see any bad remarks on it. So if, if it doesn't work out, I'll, I'll be sure to let you know. But um, like I said, I bought the gold one, which is the stronger one. I don't anticipate any issues. Steel, uh, steel sprockets, no aluminum. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps somebody. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you. And uh, ride safe. We'll see you on the next one.